My name is Thais Gibson, and I'm the creator of the Personal Development School. This is your daily breakthrough video, and in this video, I want to teach you key principles that are relevant to true healing. So I want to start off by saying that there are a lot of people out there who will say things like, oh, you know, once you have your attachment style, your attachment style is always this way. It's stuck this way forever. You can't change it. And there couldn't be anything really further from the truth. Now, the problem that happens is when we try to address transformation from just the level of conscious mind. And what I want to share with you is key principle number one here is that true healing requires reconditioning. So what does this mean? It means that if I go in and let's pretend that I am carrying this big wound, let's say I went through this, you know, challenging or painful event in childhood where I had two critical parents who were constantly telling me I'm not good enough. And maybe over time that really damaged my self-esteem. And maybe I grew up in my upbringing coming to believe this about my sense of self. So what happens? Well, if I go into a therapist's office or I go seek counseling and, you know, years and years later, I'm realizing, hey, my self-esteem has been impacted. And I go into that office and I go talk about that problem. And I say, oh, this happened and it was painful. You know, it's nice to acknowledge things. It's sometimes helpful to gain context for things, but that's not healing. What healing requires is for us to recondition that story about ourselves. So what essentially happens is the subconscious mind, I'm actually going to take you guys through some slides here so you can deeply see and understand this. We're going to talk about how this is relevant to anxious preoccupied style specifically. So true healing is taking these programs that got conditioned because of painful or traumatic events and reconditioning them. So let's say as an anxious preoccupied, your version, you know, a common version, though not good enough is a belief in there as well. One of the big versions is um, I will be abandoned, right? So you've got this repetition plus emotion of, of events. Now, repetition plus emotion is actually what fires and wires programs, essentially. And so if you constantly have this real abandonment or perceived abandonment that's taking place, well, it fires and wires this concept or idea that, well, I'm abandoned. I will be abandoned. Now you have this belief lodged into your subconscious mind. Healing in your adult life is completely possible, but it's not going to happen by just talking about it. It's going to happen by reconditioning the imprint that was left. So what I want to show you in this video, and I'm actually going to take you through some slides, are some core belief imprints that commonly show up for the anxious preoccupied individual. And then we're going to talk a little bit about one tool we can use for actual reconditioning. And I want to share with you that when we address things at the subconscious level, it's how true transformation happens in any area of life. So if you find yourself in a position where you feel not good enough, you can break through that. If you find yourself in a position where you feel afraid of abandonment, you can break through that. If you find yourself in a position where you feel that you are unloved and you've got that program, you can break through that. But we have to fire and wire new neural pathways, new ideas using repetition plus emotion and allow these old dynamics, these old neural pathways to atrophy over time, which they do sort of like muscles. It's like, if I stop working out my bicep muscle every day, my bicep muscle will atrophy, right? So, you know, your, your forms of neuroplasticity follow along those same lines. So I want to show you here some very specific examples. We have a lot of requests for people to talk about slides. We have this dynamic. We've got this dynamic here of um, self-esteem. And we've got this dynamic of anxious preoccupied. And these tend to be two things that really impact anxious preoccupied individuals. And what I want to show you is that we tend to have these core beliefs and you can see how they get acquired. So remember, subconscious beliefs get fired and wired through repetition plus emotion, right? So what do we have? Well, anxious preoccupied, when they go through real or perceived abandonment, often come to feel not good enough. Repetition of feeling I'm not good enough. They may tell that same story right? If you grew up with a critical family member and, you know, you're in the household, or you have a really critical teacher or mentor that's constantly through repetition and emotion, letting you know what you did wrong, what wasn't enough, what needs to be better. I mean, you can see how we adopt these programs because they fire and wire these patterns at the subconscious level, which then become our programs. And, and these programs become a, a large part of our self-concept. So if you look here, we can see some of these different core beliefs, right? We've got, I am not enough, which is a common one associated with low self-esteem. I am, I am incapable. 
tends to be associated with low self-esteem, though, though not always a core belief. Um, I am weak, I am unworthy, I don't matter, or I'm unimportant, I'm disliked, or something's wrong with me, okay? So all of these ideas through anything we're exposed to, right? You may feel like you're not strong enough to do the things you want as a child. You might feel weak next to a big, scary parent who's really controlling and, and loud and raises their voice when they're mad. Whatever repetitive experiences you're exposed to, you give meaning to. When you fire and wire that meaning over and over again, you keep getting repeated to the, you keep getting exposed to these same repeated experiences. Okay, now you've got these, these programs that form over time. Now, something that's really interesting is that the conscious mind cannot outwill or overpower the subconscious mind. So as much as, you know, let's say we look at this just from, from a self-esteem perspective, let's say you want to walk into a networking event and feel confident, but you don't feel confident. Well, what happens? You can't just say to your mind, feel confident now, let's go. And it turns on. It, it doesn't happen like that, right? You go in with this sort of like emotional state that's just there. And that emotional state is because your conscious mind is responsible for roughly three to 5% of how you behave, what you believe, what you think, how you emote, um, like what you feel. Um, and your subconscious and unconscious mind collectively are responsible for roughly 95 to 97%. And so when we're not in control of what we're believing, we're not really in control of our emotions. Now, here's one other important thing here. When you look at this idea, I often talk about this, and, and this, we go into depth a lot in the courses in our school. But if you look at this idea here, BTEA, right? Beliefs, thoughts, emotions, actions. Well, what do we know? We know that what we believe, so going here, let's say I believe I'm not good enough, um, that dictates a lot of my thoughts. You see the T there. So if I'm believing I'm not good enough, I'm gonna start having thoughts throughout the day. If I have this subconscious program that's stored with me that says I'm not good enough, I'm gonna start having thoughts throughout the course of my day going, oh, I'm not smart enough, I'm not interesting enough, I'm not funny enough, I'm not cool enough, I'm not pretty enough. You know, I'm gonna have all these thought patterns, right? That sort of, you can imagine like a tree trunk with its tree branches coming off of it. How do I feel when I'm thinking these things? What are my emotions? If you look at the E there, well, I start feeling insecure. I feel inadequate. Now, neuroscience has actually proven that every single decision we make is based off our emotional state. So even those of us who think we're logical, rational thinkers at our tipping point are making emotionally based decisions. We're just quick to then rationalize them through logic. So if you look at this BTE, BTEA acronym, beliefs to thoughts, to emotions, to actions, I want you to imagine as the anxious, preoccupied individual, um, just how much some of these things can really affect you. You know, feeling like I'm going to be abandoned. Well, so what do you start thinking? Oh, they're pulling away. They're not interested in me. I can see that things are changing. They're not going to stick around. I'm not going to, you know, have somebody forever. I'm going to end up being alone all my life. You can see all the thought patterns that stem off of this core belief. And then how do you feel when you think those thoughts, anxious and afraid? Well, then how do you act? Well, often through activating strategies, right? We really try to close in and hone in on somebody and not let them go. And we get afraid of losing them. So that action is driven by that emotional state, which underneath it has those belief and thought patterns sponsoring it, right? So these are all subconscious things. A lot of these ideas, these self-concepts, I mean, you know, if you're having a conscious thought and you're like, I would like to think about something and you create that thought from your conscious mind, it's very different than you know, these autopilot thoughts that happen, that elicit feelings, that elicit coping mechanisms and behaviors. So what I want you to understand first is that these are some major ones connected to anxious preoccupied. We've got, I'm abandoned, I'm alone, I am unloved or will be unloved, I am unsafe. That's often activated when we feel somebody pulling away. We get that nervous system response if you're an AP. I am bad. <laughs> anxious preoccupied don't think this consciously, but they feel this way sometimes subconsciously. So they go to their way from a BTEA perspective um, to to show, right, that they are good. They try to people please or, you know, earn approval or earn connection to show that they're good, right? They're a good person. You can trust them. Um, other big pain points are I am disconnected, I am rejected, or I am excluded, right? Some other big pain points in here. Now, these core beliefs, I put a chart in here. There's actually some, some different ones at a, a deeper level, um, but these are really impactful. Some of these major beliefs will have associated with our attachment cell or associated with low self-esteem, right? We have different ones sort of showing up in different areas. Now, how do we create change? Well, when you actually want to reprogram your beliefs, 
This is a completely possible process. How do we know this? Because people are not born with those core beliefs. They get conditioned through repetition plus emotion over time, and they can actually be reconditioned through repetition plus emotion over time. So what I want you to understand here first, I'm actually going to take you in the next um, follow-up video to this. So stay tuned because the next video will come out about this the next day. Um, I'm going to take you through like not just understanding your subconscious mind and how you can know that you can heal as an anxious, preoccupied person, but I'm going to take you through a slide that actually discusses and demonstrates how you can recondition a core belief. And it's a huge part of healing because when we can change the story about ourselves, it says, I'm not good enough. I don't, I'm, I'm unloved. I'm going to be alone forever. Um, I'm going to be excluded. I'm going to be disliked. I'm going to be rejected. These ideas that the anxious preoccupied has been conditioned with, unfortunately, that's a huge sponsoring part of what creates their attachment cell. Well, when you can start actually seeing these things, understanding them individually, and then reconditioning them or reprogramming them, this is where you get to have your sense of self-confidence back, your sense of security and relationships back. You're not constantly feeling like you have to walk on eggshells um, to, to get to the next space or to reconnect with people more deeply. So you can actually have that freedom and that confidence and the ability to really be yourself and set boundaries and not people please through reconditioning these core ideas. Now it's not the only part of healing as an anxious preoccupied attachment cell, there's, but it's a huge part. Um, so I just wanted to share a little bit more about this and if you want to do a deep dive into our courses, I mean, every single course we have in the personal development school is all about reconditioning. It's specifically centered around the fact that we can't just talk about stuff or recognize it. We actually have to go in and do the work to recondition. That's how real healing happens, whether it's reconditioning our relationship to our emotions, whether it's reconditioning our relationship to our needs, or whether it's really relating to our beliefs um, and thought patterns or reconditioning our relationship to our boundaries. So um, anyways, if you want to check out the, the the next video. I'll have a big in-depth video about uh, one key tool for reprogramming. There are many, um, but if you want to check out a course right now and just go right into the reconditioning process, um, that is our course about reprogramming the anxious preoccupied attachment style. So you can check it out in all, our all access membership pass using the link below. And I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope this makes a little bit of sense and thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video soon.